Hi, I'm Dan. And I'm Nicole. Welcome to Box of the Month. Welcome. So uh, this will be our last uh, new show of 2020. I know. <laughs> this parting is such sweet sorrow, but in yeah. this case, get out of here, 2020. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of us are anxious to get this year behind us. Um, but yes. anyway, um, before we get started with the Box of the Month, I just wanted to uh, talk about a couple things. Um, one, the channel just recently went over 4,000 subscribers, so I really want to um, thank everyone who subscribed and who watches and, and all of that. Um, it's been pretty cool to get this far, you know, in a relatively short time. I think so, yeah. 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 Um, and also, um, starting next year, uh, I'm going to drop the Daniel Carter Passy show name off of this show and just call it Box of the Month. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Because Nicole's as much a part of it as as oh. I am, and it was your idea well, to do the box yeah. of the month originally. <laughs> um, so I, you know, and I, when I first started the channel, you know, I didn't really know exactly what it was going to evolve into, and yeah, that's um, true. I just used that name because I didn't know what else to do for my very first program. I mostly just wanted people to know I was still here. So, um, you know, I think at this point. It's kind of evolved beyond that, so, <laughs> so I wanted to just, um, you know, be more reflective of that. So it'd be the same thing, just a different, different name. Because I mean, it was um, really with Nicole's encouragement that I even started doing my own channel in the first place. Um, well, I think you would have done it eventually. I think I just pushed the button sooner. <laughs> maybe because I was, you know, after my previous. Uh, Experience. Experience. Yeah, I was pretty uh, jaded for a little bit. You yeah. were. It yeah. was. It was a tough bit of time, but yeah, I think that you know we all kind of go through those moments in life, mm -hmm. you know, where we're kind of like, what the heck, and we might have to reset or restart, and it's very humbling. Yeah. <laughs> and you know that's something that 2020 has definitely um, given us as well as some humbling experiences. That's for sure. Um, so you know, yeah, that's very cool, honey. Thank you. Um, moving forward, it'd be cool if it was just box of the month yeah yeah I think that'd be yeah because nice. you know I, I mean this this is your channel I mean it, it is your channel and yeah. you know I am a driving force behind you for a good reason uh, mm -hmm. because you know you're pretty smart <laughs> <laughs> and um, what you do is pretty cool and I know that there's a few other um, people out there I don't think I haven't seen you guys um, that are pretty cool too, uh, but I just think that the way you talk to people is very human in a way that um, even when I say something like, okay, well, but what's that? And you realize maybe something wasn't as um, beginner as what you thought, you're very gracious about it and you just start re-explaining and, you know, people need that. You know, they don't need anybody that's like, what do you mean you didn't know that? They need, <laughs> you know, they need someone that was like, oh, you didn't know, hang on, let me, you know, tell you about that. and. You know, I think that um, as we go through this year and finish it up and look back, the people that we've really hung on to are people that made us feel like we're all in this together, mm -hmm. you know? And I think you make people feel like that too. Well, thank you. Like we're all weathering a storm and, but here's a cool model. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, let's take our mind off of that for a little bit and, you know, let's just keep moving forward, you know, until we get back to the brighter days. Right. And that's important. Very true. Yeah. Very true. Yeah. So anyway, um, having gotten through all that, I think we can get to the box now. Yay! And we got a uh, <laughs> sort of by request, um, and also just to change things up, we're doing N scale this month. Yes. Uh, we got a nice little uh, Christmas bonus for you N scalers. We know you guys saw um, on Christmas, and so we thought we would just kind of. Uh, do a two-part uh, present <laughs> here for our last uh, show because we know that um, you guys don't get as much love um, on our program as <laughs> as the HO people do. And I would lift this box, but this box is so heavy, y'all. Um, <laughs> there's so many N-scale trains that fit in a box of this size <laughs> versus how many HO scale trains fit in a box of this size. So. Um, Hang on to your hats. It's about to be a longer program. <laughs> yeah. So we are going to start right here with this Kado. I'm going to hand this right to you. Okay. 
And I'm going to continue to lurk around in here and see what pairs I can put together. All right. Well, this is a Kato model of Union Pacific 844, uh, Union Pacific FEF3 class 484. And um, it's a pretty cool engine. I have the HO scale version of this, too, which was uh, mine's by Athern. But uh, the Kato is the one that made the N scale one. And it's a pretty nice little engine. N-Scale is so cute, but I'd be so nervous that I would break stuff. Yeah. You know you know how I am. I'm kind of like, you know? <laughs> 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 and I just would be so nervous. It's got so many little fine, beautiful details. I mean, yeah. look at that. It shimmers. Yeah, it's pretty. Um, it's a pretty nicely done model. I mean, uh, and they did it with the, you know, the a A44's look changes periodically depending on how they painted it for the season or whatever, whatever they do. But um, they, they've got the, you know, white striping on the running boards uh, or in the side and, the, uh, and on the, around the driver rims, which is, you know, really cool. And that's something that's really hard to do if you're trying to paint that yourself. So, oh, I bet. It yeah. looks really classy. It does. It looks really neat. I like it. It's so, pretty. It's a pretty train. That's one of my more favorite models. I mean, not that I, I mean, I, they're all my favorite models, but. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, watch out now. But I, I like it because I've seen um, 844 in person several times. Ooh. Um, and that it's, makes I, a difference. Yeah, it's always neat to have models of trains that I've actually seen. I, I enjoy that. So this is a set, and I try to look for number three, but I didn't see three in there. I'm sure you have it somewhere, but it says one, two, and three. Um, so I'm just going to hand you these. Okay. Yeah, these are, I'll just open one of these because they're basically all the same except for the oh, okay. number. And yeah, I do have all four of them. Um, I just don't know where the other one is right now. Right. This is also by Kato, and this is the uh, oh, look at that. Southern Pacific Daylight Articulated Chair Car. This is, they sold these as an add-on mm -hmm. for their um, SP Daylight set, which has 4449 and all the passenger cars or no I'm sorry it it has all the passenger cars they sold 4449 separately oh. but I do have that one in N scale also um, and I have the whole train so well, I can't wait until we have enough room to run all of them yeah and does so this do, one light up and do all that stuff like, I don't they, they do have lighting kits for these I don't think I put the lighting kits in it okay. but that's Something is fairly oh. fairly simple to do. Oh, and we have a cat. We have a kitty. That's right Felix, there. our cat Felix. Felix. So <laughs> just put that over there. All right. And so I'm just going to start with these guys. This guy is tiny and cute. Okay. And this is an Atlas model of a Baldwin VO1000 diesel decorated for Great Northern. And I'm not really sure. Why I bought this? <laughs> um, <laughs> what? Well, I, I I bought this because it's a train. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I actually, I <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I I really like the uh, the orange and green uh, GN paint job. Yeah. And the little goat logo and everything. Oh yeah, so, that's cute. I don't really model the GN, but it's a cool railroad, or was. All right. Part of, part of BNSF now. I mean, I have to imagine that though you have your favorites, that any train that came across your way, you wouldn't turn down if you had the ability to get it, right? No. I, mean, I doubt that there's, you know, like, you're like, oh, that train's garbage. <laughs> like, I just can't imagine. Not know? usually, no. I mean, yeah. Very few trains I've ever seen that I thought, yeah, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is uh, another Kato SD40-2 in Canadian National. Actually, Illinois Central uh, reporting marks, but Canadian National Paint Scheme. So this was um, one of the diesels I got a few years ago. I I started in N scale when I was a kid. Uh, I told the story when on our Christmas special, but basically for Christmas when I was three years old, I got a N scale uh, train layout with a locomotive and some cars, and um, did N scale for many years until I was, you know probably my late teens or so, and then I kind of got more in, into HO. But um, about, I don't know, is, has it been 15 years now almost? 
yeah. Um, <laughs> I moved into a condo for a while, and uh, when I when I was living for in a the while or for a long while. <laughs> I was there for quite a while. Okay, um, just, just, yeah, you're right. <laughs> um, the lost years. Uh, the lost years. <laughs> anyway, um, when I was living in the condo, I didn't have a lot of space. It was just a one-bedroom condo, so I, I started getting back into uh, getting more end scale. Oh, oh, and there's another hi, cat. Hi, June. <laughs> I don't think she's quite in the the frame, but she's in our frame. Oh, yeah, she'll make it there. <laughs> she'll make it there. Hi, June, baby. What are you doing, girl? Mm -hmm. Anyway, we'll move on. Yes. Okay, so I have this guy that's in a Ziploc. <laughs> okay. This is a project. <laughs> Sometimes Why is it stored in a Ziploc, though? It's stored in a Ziploc because <laughs> I was going to work on it and paint it, and I, I was... Well, this one doesn't really have any loose parts, so I'm not sure why I put it in the Ziploc, but... <laughs> Okay, but next to it was okay, these. Okay, those are different. These are different. Yeah, this okay, is. Those are different. I remember what this was. This is a Kato um, F40 that I was going to paint as a Caltrain unit. Oh. Um, now, Kato offered uh, their F40s in Caltrain already, but they didn't have the, the lighting right on the front, so I was going to do it, to, you know, the way it's supposed to be. Oh, okay. Because I do have a set of their Caltrain cars, and I wanted to have an engine to use with them. So, um, anyway, it didn't get too far. I did actually get to um, removing the uh, horn area because these ha this was originally, an, I think it was basically detailed as an Amtrak unit, and Amtrak had the horns right up front. Okay. So I filled in... Um, that spot uh, with some styrene and you know sanded and everything because the caltrain horns were in a different spot so anyway that okay. was one of the things i was changing but obviously still needs some work <laughs> <laughs> another well, supply well I, okay so i'm not wearing my glasses and, and this is something that's kind of a contention thing because it's new for me um, but when I first looked at this, I thought it was Legos, and I was like, <laughs> what is this doing in here? No, it's not Lego. And, <laughs> no, um, but, you know, this was the part that was sticking up, and it almost oh. looked like, and I was, like, trying to see it oh, through the yeah. bag, which is kind of glaring because of the light. And so I'm, like, really trying to get down in there to see it. <laughs> I really just need to get my glasses and keep them close to me so that, you know. <laughs> That doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah. This um, this is a pair of shells uh, for GP40-2s, and these are Atlas shells. Um, I got these because um, a while back I was working on a freelanced railroad um, that had something to do with that other channel I used to be at. Oh. Uh -huh. And these were going to be engines for that. And then uh, thankfully I didn't get to painting all of the stuff that I bought for that. So these will become something else, probably. Um, but well, we could make up our own railroad name we, here. Yeah, we could. We could uh, oh. make up something new. Yeah, um, that would be really cool. Mm -hmm. To reflect where we're living or the area that we like to rail fan in the most. Mm -hmm. Rail fan in the most. Mm -hmm. That's a hint. Uh -huh. It's time to go rail fanning. Yeah, It's for been sure. too long. It has. Okay, so this is something too, but it looks like the insides of something and the trucks. Okay, so this one makes more sense why it's in a Ziploc, <laughs> because it's all in pieces. Um, yes. This is actually a Kato SD40-2. It's a lot like the CN unit we just looked at, except it's completely disassembled. <laughs> and it's also undecorated, and I think part of the shell is somewhere else. <laughs> so, yeah, this is just the, it's the mechanism and the... Basically, the sill and the cab oh, is the in other there. Part that goes around, like the walkway. Yeah. The, what did yeah. you call that? The sill. Sill. Yeah. Sill. The handrails and, and all of that, and the, the cab, and the body is somewhere, probably in another box somewhere. Okay. Um, anyway. See, that's another thing that would be great when we get enough space for you to actually start unboxing these things. Then we can find all of your actual stuff that needs worked on and put everything together again. Yeah. Okay, so this is the last zip locker. Is that the shell? This is another shell. 
It's just another not, shell. Not that one. This is an Atlas um, SD7 shell, or SD, no, it's an SD9, sorry. Um, anyway. Um, it's so amazing how you can just look at it and be like, oh, no, SD9. <laughs> Yep. I haven't looked at trains for a long time. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> um, anyway, this one has, uh, I remember why I, I got this. This was actually the original shell from an undecorated model that I had because um, it has, uh, it's the non-dynamic brake roof. And I wanted, uh, again, for a freelance railroad that shall remain nameless, um, I wanted some dynamic brake equipped SD9s. So I got um, off eBay some other shells and I took the original shell from the model and put it in a Ziploc to just save it. So oh, okay. that's where. So will you use it someday or? Maybe, I don't is know. Is it a remnant? It's kind of just an extra part at this point. But huh. we'll, we'll Maybe see. someday if we get everything unpacked and everything and you find all pieces that are like extra pieces that you don't need, like remnants for, mm -hmm. you know, material, but like for trains, um, we could like um, raffle them off to people or something. Oh, that's an idea. Right? Yeah. Like that would be cool. If people, and we could like donate the money to charity and we could do little raffle tickets and then people could win like, you know, and then like the top, you know, win could be like an actual train done by you. Uh -huh. If people think this is a good idea, <laughs> comment in the comment section. I think, you know, we could probably do pretty cool and raise some cool money for some cool charities. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Maybe that's an idea. This one is empty. Any reason why, sir? That you have an empty cartridge in here. Where's the train? Probably the box for the uh, SD40-2 that's in the bag. Are you sure? No. No. <laughs> that's but why you have uh, to ask the follow-up questions, ladies okay, and gentlemen. But here's my evidence. It says SD40-2 undecked, which means undecorated. Okay. And that was an SD40-2 that's not decorated. So it's probably the box for that one. I, we'll go with it. We'll go, we'll go with it. <laughs> Okay, we're back to a very lovely, lovely. Oh, okay. Lovely this train. is a Bachman model. I don't mm. have a lot of Bachman, but I do have this one. This is the Norfolk and Western 611, which I think somebody asked me if I would review this. Oh, really? Yeah. You should totally review it. I think retro reviews would be really great. Yeah, that's one thing we've been talking about as a, an idea. Um, since I'm not really able to do as many new product reviews right now, um, then I might start doing some retro reviews of stuff that I've already got. So this would be a candidate maybe for that. This is another 484, um, but this that is a... It's just so spiffy. Yeah, these are really neat. I actually, I've never actually seen 611 in person. Um, that would be something to is do. Is that on the East Coast? Yeah. yeah. See, I could have seen it when I was in the Army, but I wouldn't have known. Yeah. I wasn't really thinking trains then. <laughs> it's another engine that they run uh, on occasion, you know. Oh, like a tour tour one? Yeah, like, like 44, 49. Yeah, it's like, excursion. That's what it's called. A, yeah. A excursion. I think, yeah, and they, they actually had it, I think it is running again now, but they, it was just in a museum for quite a few years for a while. And there's another box with little parts in it. <laughs> Where is the train, sir? Not in there. <laughs> Not in there. Do you see what I have to work with, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> There's nothing. This is a, a box for a, a Kato RDC, and all that's in here is some, just some leftover parts from it, and the actual RDC is elsewhere, so I don't think we need to worry about that one too much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, another another SD40-2 undecorated, and it's got a, the basically the weight and floor from a, I think this is a Microtrain's car. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening, sir? <laughs> well, see, oh that's goodness. what happens when you're an N-scale for many years. You end up with little random things like this. <laughs> but where are the trains? <laughs> I'm sure it's somewhere. <laughs> it's just not not here. It's and just not here. This, this box has nothing to do with this part, but they're just kind of together right now. <laughs> It probably fell in there like it was a match made in accident to heaven, <laughs> and now it's like, I'll just stay. Which means that somewhere um, I have another undecorated Kato SD40-2. Well, actually, let me just hand you this while we're having a good giggle, because uh, that is just a whole thing of wheels. Another, actually, those are gears. These are, and these oh, are, gears. You know, it's in a micro brush for some reason. Um, <laughs> this is an Atlas caboose box, but all it's got in it are, are uh, a micro brush and 
um, some HO scale Atherin gears, what? What? which I don't know why those are in there either, but that's okay. This is the pieces box, that's why. It's very random, this box. <laughs> this is an N-scale microtrains <laughs> box with a bunch of wheels and a couple of trucks from, looks like an Atlas heavyweight passenger car. So. Okay, I think this is the last one. <laughs> the last. Definitely oh, not go. the last box. This is another microtrains box with looks like everything <laughs> but the car in it. <laughs> it's a flat car. <laughs> Well, there should be a flat car, but all that's in here are, are a set of trucks and the pins that hold them on. Six. That's like six boxes. Where are the trains? Where? Know. They're probably in different boxes. Somewhere. They're swimming loose. Oh, my gosh. All right. Here okay. we go. Back to trains. Back to trains. All right. <laughs> this is a Fox Valley Models uh, BNSF GP60M. Oh, that's pretty. Number 107, which I, I think I'd intended to renumber this one uh, to match one that I took photos of uh, some time ago. Actually, back in 2008, so that's a mm. while. Yeah. But um, anyway, another potential project. It's a very, um, I remember this is, this is really detailed, and they actually give you the little grab irons and stuff, but you got to put them on yourself, and that's really hard to do in N scale. Everything's so tiny, right? Yeah. When I did jewelry, I had this little thing that I clicked onto a table, mm -hmm. and it had, you know, a really big magnifying glass on it, but it also had these two little pieces that did this, so I could actually, you know, catch my two jewelry pieces to put stuff on it. Mm. it made it nice to have extra hands. I probably should get something like that yeah. at some point. I really think, well, yeah. you know, definitely once we create your area to actually work work in, yeah. That would be a good thing to have. This is a Kato BNSF C44 9W. Another BNSF. Mm -hmm. Now, this one's longer. <clears throat> some are longer, some are shorter. What's the significance? Is it like for um, in inter work versus long, you know, long drives? Or? Well, the, the railroads have kind of more or less at this point standardized on this these uh, six axle diesels that tend okay. to be a little longer because the trucks are bigger and um, this uh, the GP60s were made to haul back in the 90s they were made to haul intermodal trains at high speeds um, okay. but I think the railroads uh, for whatever reason they, they don't really do the four axle units anymore okay. so um, very much so they're, they're all gone to ones that are basically this size so if you see a modern track, you're going to see the longer side. Mostly. Likely. Most of the, the smaller uh, diesels are, are used for locals and switching nowadays. Okay. So the, the long haul trains are usually the oh bigger God, engines. That's a nice little Santa Fe car here. Okay, this is yeah, Cotto business car. business car decorated for Santa Fe. And Oh, wow, it actually has a Rapido coupler on it. Did Don't you do that? No, it came that way. Oh. So that one obviously hasn't probably been run at all. <laughs> because <laughs> I don't have hardly anything that still has those couplers on it. That was like the old N-scale couplers from back in the really old days. Really old days. Huh? Yeah. So here we're going to stick with Santa Fe theme. Now okay. that is a really pretty paint scheme. I like that. Yeah, this is a... Um, Another Kato oh. SD40-2. Oh, your girl is flipping behind you. Hi, huh? hi, June. Hi, June. Oh, what is she doing? She's eating paper or oh. something. Oh, Let's that's not let good. her eat that. Okay. Um, <laughs> anyway, <sighs> they're cute, but they have no sense at all. Well, <laughs> yes, that is very true. Um, anyway, um, this is a, a Kato SD40. <laughs> Right now, she's attacking the couch. There's nothing there. It's just the couch behind you. <laughs> and then she just flipped onto your back. <laughs> Don't wink at me when you're being naughty. <laughs> you're so freaking cute. Oh, my God. Uh, <sighs> Don't wink at me when you're being naughty. Come here, you. She's on that side. If you want to um, uh, pop her down real quick, I'll do the, I'll okay. this. Okay. Come on. Come on. Go. Down you go, big girl. Go Thank find some you. cat toys. 
Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So back uh, to our regular uh, scheduled program. <laughs> yeah. This is another um, Kato SD40-2 that I bought as a Santa Fe unit and then patched for BNSF. So I did oh. uh, I did the um, numbers and the BNSF markings with decals. I also painted the AC unit orange because a lot of um, the BNSF SD40-2s had their AC units swapped out with other units, so that okay. some of them were mismatched in color. So um, anyway, I, I did like three of these, I think. I don't know if they're oh. all in this box, but... Um, well, if they are, we're going to find them. Because I decided, for whatever reason, when I started doing N-Scale, that I was going to uh, do mostly more modern than my 1990s HO theme. So um, I started doing BNSF and modern UP and stuff like that. Okay. Though this is sort of a 90s engine. This is a Southern Pacific. Yeah, it's another Dash 9. Oh. Basically the same thing as the BNSF engine we saw, but in okay. SP colors. But in SP colors. Yeah. So I have this Union Pacific right here. The, I'll switch you. You take okay. that and I'll take this. Okay, this is a UP SD9043 Mac with the we, we Will Deliver paint scheme. Oh. So that was... We Will Deliver. Yeah, that We Will Deliver was like the late 90s, I think, right? Just after the SP merger, they started doing that. And then I think they got some ribbing for it because they... I think they had some problems delivering for a while. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember there was some, some issues with, with UP right after the SP merger. I don't know if it was difficulty coordinating two huge railroads or what, but anyway. Oh, all right. Here's a good one with one of my favorite. Oh, another Fox Valley. This is an SD70 Ace in the modern UP scheme. So this is... With the flag. With the flag, yeah, just like you see nowadays. Right. So... That's cool. Yeah. I don't have too much Fox Valley stuff, but they're generally pretty nice models. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I really okay. like their wheels. They make, especially in N-Scale, they make some really nice aftermarket wheels. Really? Yeah. So this is interesting. It's got this little, I mean, oh, I don't okay. know if you want to show it like that. This is actually the Thanks. same kind of engine as that one. Right. But this is a Broadway Limited version. It has the little foam protector deal but pretty much exactly the same sometimes it's interesting you can compare brands and there's always some you know differences in paint color and things like that yeah I agree but also in the way they're presenting it like look at that that's pretty cool yeah it's a it's a fancier special. fancier box yeah, yeah for sure all right Hearing creaking over there. It's mm. tripping me out. It's probably the cat. <laughs> it probably is, but it keeps tripping me out. Another Dash 9. Or no, this is, I'm sorry, this is an AC4400 CW. Um, this is uh, another one that I patched. Um, it's a Chicago Northwestern Operation Lifesaver unit that I patched for Union Pacific by putting the little. Uh, I think I did that with the decal, the, the yellow, and then I used a microscale decals for the number. But, um, okay. And a UP shield on the front. So, um, anyway, it used to, you know, because CNW merged into UP right over, just a little before they merged SP, so you used to see a lot of engines like that with the patches on them. Don't see so, many, so much of that anymore. I think yeah. they've either sold off or repainted most of them at this point. Hmm. Okay. There's probably still a few running around, but I don't know. This is another patch job. This is an ex Conrail unit. It's an SD70 Mac. And this one is patched for CSX. What does CSX stand for? Uh, you know, we went through this a while back, and I, it's uh, Jesse Seaboard. And I think the X is extended or something like that. I don't know. They, oh. I've heard different explanations, but it was okay. Chessy system and the Seaboard system merged. And 
anyway, I've heard other things that are less, um, not something you want to say on a family show. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, <laughs> just no. leave that one alone. <laughs> no, okay, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. <laughs> and here's the next one. Yeah. Um, this is another one that I patched. I was into patching N-scale diesels a lot for a while there. This is an XBN unit that I patched for BNSF. So basically taking off the BN shield on the cab side and then putting the BNSF lettering with microscale decals and also some uh, reflector stripes on the side that they use nowadays. But okay. otherwise pretty much the same as the stock SD40-2. You can probably tell in N scale I have a lot of Kato. Because <laughs> generally their stuff is really nice and runs well. This is a Kato uh, BNSF-9 in the Warbonnet scheme. Color. Yeah, this was a, I think this was one of the last orders of new diesels that were delivered in this paint scheme, but with the BNSF lettering instead of Santa Fe. Mm. So. They really packed this guy up. Uh, scale trains. Yeah. What do we got here? Well, I think just the one. One scale train. So. Just one? Yeah. <laughs> this is... What is this one? It's a, a, a ET. Et forty four AC. I don't know the, you know it's like alphabet soup with the locomotive designations. There's another basically another modern UP unit. There's a, the scale trains ones are really nice. I, I like them a lot. I prop. I don't remember if I did a review on this one or not, but I might have. Okay, so we have this one box that has a bunch of pieces in it. Found another one. <laughs> oh. So. Well, those are the most interesting ones. <laughs> Aren't they, though? <laughs> that is this one. Let's see. There's a cab in there. Okay. There's a bunch of pieces this... in there. Oh, it's an MP15DC Atlas model, except most of it's not here. It was, well, it's... Oh, there's something under there. Hang there's on. a chassis. There is a completely stripped train in there. Do not look. We just said this was PG. <laughs> Chassis and lots of little parts, but not the main shell. Another, wow. um, I think there, I actually have, yeah, I think that's actually a decoder on the top there. Um, I had a couple of these that I bought that I was also going to paint for a certain fictitious railroad. <laughs> and that was another project that thankfully never got completed. So um, they will end up as something else eventually. I will hand you this other not put together train. Okay, this is an Atlas GP38-2 chassis, which I might have got to go with those GP40-2 shells because the, basically the mechanisms are interchangeable. Okay. Um, anyway, basically the Basically the same thing. Internal workings of the engine, but not the shell. Gotcha. Again. <laughs> <laughs> you are so funny. All right, so I'm going to go with this because it's not really, I mean, it's like the back end behind the engine. Okay, yeah, this is a, a Bachman Spectrum tender. Yes, tender. That is what it is called. Thank you. Steam engine tender. That is, uh, they call it their USRA long tender. This one's painted for Rio Grande. And I don't really remember why I got this. I was using it, intending mm -hmm. to use it, I think, for some project. But I don't remember now what. Mm. Um, it is nice that Bachman does sell the N-scale tender separately. Uh, a lot of their tenders you can buy as separate uh, models, so that um, if you want to use them for a project, it, you know, you know, it's easier to get one than like trying to cannibalize an engine. And that's exactly the same thing. I have two of them. Yes. For some reason. 
Oh, that's all right. Yeah. You might be running too. That looks like another chassis. Oh, uh, yeah, it's another MP15. In work, in progress. Yeah. This is just like the other one, so I think we can just put it. Put it with the other one. Put it with the other one, yeah. Some of these boxes are not easy to open. I'll just pass this to you since this one's okay. giving me a hard time. <laughs> oh, something that's, that's not a locomotive. This is a Walther's GSC flat car. Ooh, that's that's, oh, actually, Southern Pacific. <laughs> that won't come out. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't want to come out of the box. But, oh, yeah. look at how cute it is. And what's cool about this one is it's actually um, oh, big wheel. yeah, big wheel. It's made of metal, so it's actually got a fairly decent weight to it, which That's is cool. yeah important, especially with N scale because you know flat cars tend to be light anyway, and in N scale they're so small. And so, um, well, don't you put stuff on it though, like you know small pipes or little wood logs to represent logging? Or yeah, you could put. That's a, how you get your weight. You could put a load on it, which yeah. helps, yeah. Oh, yeah, put a load on it. A load. <laughs> Look at this beautiful train. Okay, this I is a it. this is a Santa Fe GP7. Oh, with black the, and white stripes. Yeah, and the old Santa Fe scheme with the uh, stripes. Oh, I love that. That is so cool. I have one of these in HO, too. Do you? With that yeah. paint scale? With the paint, paint job, yeah. Nice. I think that one's an Athern, but this is an Atlas model. Yeah, this is really neat. I like this one. Doesn't really necessarily go with the rest of this, but <laughs> it's cool. And then we have this one, which is this black and yellow one, which is pretty sweet looking, too. Yeah, I think. Nope. <laughs> Not sure why I ended up with this one. This isn't it. It's an Alco RS11 Atlas model decorated for Seaboard Coastline. Oh. So kind of a neat looking paint job. Seaboard Coastline. It's an East, East Coast Railroad. East Coast. One of the railroads that eventually became part of CSX. Oh, okay. I only figured it was East Coast because they're calling it Seaboard. Yeah. Because they call it East, the Eastern Seaboard. Yeah. If it looks like I just continue to reach into a vast emptiness and pull trains out, you are correct. <laughs> it's, it's amazing how many um, models, N scale models, you can fit in one of these boxes. Right? I think maybe I've pulled out half of the trains. And I, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have nine. I have nine boxes on my lap right now, you guys. And I've pulled out maybe half of the trains so far. So, no joke. Oh my gosh, you are so cute! <laughs> Look at this one! Oh my gosh! Are this, you serious? Yeah, this is an Atlas Shea. Oh. Just like the, you know, the ones at Roaring Camp? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, these are really oh. neat little models. Oh, Especially because they actually managed to get the. Um, the drive shaft thing on the side to actually rotate when it's running, which is really neat. Really? Yeah. That is so cool. this is this is pretty neat. I I've done a um I put D C C in this one. That one is so. super cute. Yeah, this one is uh, this one is factory painted for Crown Crown Willamette Paper Company. So oh. maybe from Oregon. Oh, okay. Uh, is this the same um that flat is a car or is it a different No, that's one? a different flat car. Okay, then I'm gonna put it right here for you. Okay. And this goes with that. Okay. This is Wheels of Time, which I don't know Wheels that I Wheels of Time. Yeah. It's it's an an smaller, interesting name. Smaller company. They do some really neat models. Um they haven't done a lot of models, but they what they do, do is really nice. This is a what is this? Bethlehem steel flat car. And then this one's decorated for Rio Grande, which is very cool. That is very cool. So, looks like I painted the wheels on it so that they're, um, it's got metal wheels. And I don't, I don't know if these are the original wheels or not, but anyway, I did 
start to weather it by painting the wheels. Other than that, it's pretty stock in the box. That goes with that. This goes with that. With this one. Okay. Yes. Okay, this is an Atlas SD35 decorated for Southern Railway. And not sure why I have this one either, but it's really cool looking. I really like the Southern, um, I've always liked the Southern Railway um, paint job, the black with the white stripe and the gold. I always thought that was a really attractive paint scheme. I think, you know, a lot of times we would hear, I'm not really sure why I have this. And it's because, you know, you thought it was a nice train. Yeah, I think that's basically what it comes down to. Yeah. Ooh, I like that one. Yeah. I mean, even though you were living in the um, condo for about a decade, um, you still had that other little storage stuff, and so you were still gathering, I call it gathering, you notice that, <laughs> gathering trains to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, it's no wonder you ha oh my gosh, it's another cutie. This is another Atlas Shea. Um, yes. I'll leave this one in the box because it's essentially exactly the same as the one we just saw. The only difference is this one is painted but not decorated with the railroad name. So um, at some point I'll have to letter it with something. Like a railroad that we make up or like a railroad that is out there? Could be made up. Okay. I do like, you know, there's a lot. Prototype modeling is cool and I really like it and that's kind of what I'm doing with my HO scale stuff mostly. But freelancing and making up your own railroad has a lot of benefits and appeal too because it gives you a little more creativity and um, you can come up with your own paint scheme and you know it's kind of fun. Yeah. Come up with your own ways to number the cars and everything and there's a lot, a lot to be said for that. I agree. So this is a model of so we're hitting into these Kato's that I have yeah. a stack of right here. Yes, another Kato. Uh, this is an E9, mm -mm -mm. Union Pacific 951. I think I actually have a couple of these somewhere. But um, <laughs> UP 951 is one of the ones that still exists. They use it um, for excursions once in a while. Oh, well, that's cool. Yeah. And there's another, this is another SP-9 which is just like the one that we saw earlier. So I'll just keep moving this on one that too. one. Is that the same? No, this is a this is different. It's really? SP. Okay, because the paint scheme looks the same and everything, so it, I wasn't sure. It is the same paint job, but this is an SD70M. So, okay. Um, but another SP engine. These were the Dash 9s and the... SD70Ms and the AC4400s, I think, were the last new diesels, or some of the last new diesels that SP bought. Okay. Before the merger. And this is an, another UP SD9043 Mac. It's very much like the one that we saw earlier, except this one is just in the regular old UP scheme and not the We Will Deliver. Oh, we will deliver, okay. Yeah, so we can kind of move along with that one, too. Another Kato mm -hmm. model. Most of the, a lot of these are Kato. But if I don't say it otherwise, it's probably Kato. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a Kato, SD, another SD70M, but this is the later version in UP with the flag. So. Yes, I am still grabbing multiple boxes from the big box. No, this is, all this right. is why we don't do N-scale boxes all the time, because there's a lot of stuff in there. There is. Okay, we, cars, okay, we got some freight cars. All right, we're going to get this into is, some different stuff now. Yeah, this is a, a three-bay covered hopper in Prairie Malt Limited. Prairie Malt Limited, huh? Yeah, microtrains. Nice. Looks like with aftermarket metal wheels on it, probably Fox Valley wheels. Okay. There's one right here next to you. Okay. Oh, you'd like this one. I, this I is do, a, but I couldn't get it out of it. This is a Microtrain's uh, Southern Pacific Caboose. Yay! 
my caboose. Yeah, I was actually really happy when they made these because this is actually a, an authentic model of an SP caboose too. It's really? not just a caboose with a paint job. That's really cool. Yeah, so um, I'm sure a lot of SP fans were happy when these these came out. Can it, I just hold the caboose? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I miss cabooses so much. That is so cool. You know, I just always remember seeing like black and white photos of people in the back of the train on the caboose, like, bye, <laughs> farewell, <laughs> bye. And before I could ever get there, they just did away with cabooses. You see how they are? Yeah. Like, I was just trying to get a picture, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love those cabooses. All right. This is kind of cool and different. Getting it back in the seeing. box is a challenge, too, apparently. Oh. Okay. Well, I'm glad to know I'm not the only one. <laughs> okay. This, there you go. This one has no wheels on it. I must have taken the original wheels off and oh my. not replaced them yet. <laughs> um, this is another Microtrains car. This is a tank car. Decorated uh, NSP's locomotive paint scheme, which represents uh, the ladders kind of coming off. Uh, SP decorated one or experimented with uh, this car as a fuel tender to uh, give their locomotives uh, more fuel capacity. Oh. Um, I think Burlington Northern actually made use of fuel tenders more extensively, if I, if I recall, but um, I don't think SP ever got beyond experimenting with this one. So hmm. I'm not sure if maybe it was not a success. I don't really know all the details of the program. But anyway, that's when Microtrains brought this out, I had to get one because it's an SP car and it looks cool. That's an empty box. It is. Where is the train, sir? I don't know. He never knows, people. He never knows. These oh, trains are just out gallivanting It's a caboose the box. <gasps> this was uh, a, caboose. a caboose. No, I didn't lose it. It's, it's decorated for that. Uh, railroad that oh that, that we don't that, talk about yeah <laughs> it will be stripped <laughs> yeah it's kind of like you know Voldemort yes you know, we don't we don't say the name we don't speak of it <laughs> we do not speak of it this is one of my oldest N scale cars from when I was a kid really yes this is an that Atlas is very cool a uh, Clinchfield Hopper it looks like I put microtrain trucks on at some point with aftermarket metal wheels but um, yeah. This is uh, one that I've had for a really long time. So that's that is very cool. Yeah. Kind of neat. That one's a little hard to get back t together, so I'll just... You don't say. Yeah. I got it, though. Okay. Um, I left this one, though, because I couldn't even get that one out. <laughs> yeah, it looks like we got a cracked lid. That's the only thing about Microtrain's boxes is sometimes the lids crack. Um, but this is another... Southern Pacific caboose, basically just like the other one we saw, except I think a different number on it. But. Oh, so it doesn't deserve to come out, is what you're saying? Well, I'm just teasing. we I'm have a lot of models to get through. I know, I'm just teasing. Here you go. Okay. Oh, here we go. And this is a Microtrains Western Pacific gondola, which is kind of cool. It has a little load in it. I think, oh yeah, the load comes out, so you can use it or not use it. It's kind of neat. Oh, well, that's cool. Yeah. What is that supposed to be? Is it coal? What is that? No. Gray? It? it looks like rocks, maybe, it's supposed rocks? to be, like a gravel or okay. ballast. I don't know. Some kind of rocky I think, something. I think these are actually uh, drop bottom gondolas that can discharge the loads through the bottom, so maybe it is a ballast car. Oh, okay. Or supposed to be. Um, anyway, it's kind of a nice model. Yeah. I like that you can just pull it off out like that easily. Yeah, it's not a, it's not attached. Oh, I got it. It just um, kind of sits in there. All right, here's the next one. Another microtrain car. Yes. This is another gondola decorated in the Santa Fe maintenance of way scheme. Wait, maintenance of what? Maintenance of way. Oh. It's their basically their highway department cars for oh. the railroad. You know, like when they they. Uh, put together work trains to go work on the railroad somewhere. Oh yeah, we've seen some of that. Yeah. Mm. So Santa Fe used to paint all that kind of equipment silver. Interesting. Um, I did not know that. Yeah. So that's... That's cool. 
Let's spread that out. Get this big guy right here, Sacramento Northern. Okay, another, this is a BLMA model, which is a company that existed for a while and then got bought by Atlas. Um, oh. This is a gondola decorated for Sacramento Northern, which was uh, basically a subsidiary of Western Pacific. So, pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty color name, yeah. yeah. All right, we got this guy right here. Okay, this is just kind of interesting looking. Yeah, this is an FP7 that's decorated for Canadian Pacific. Whoops, and the wheel uh -oh. just fell off. That's no goody. It's a little known feature of the F7s that they had jettisonable wheels. <laughs> Uh, I'm kidding. I know that. It's not true. <laughs> but, uh, but it's funny. <laughs> but yeah, these are pretty nice. Pretty, this is an Intermountain model. It's pretty nice. Um, I don't have a lot of Canadian Pacific stuff, so I, but I like the uh, the old uh, CP paint scheme with the maroon and gray. And, uh, okay. You know, it's kind of pretty. This is a cool paint scheme as well. Oh, uh, yeah. And there it goes again. Oh no! <laughs> it's trying to run away. Yeah, and there it goes again. All right, we'll just do oh, the, deal with that later. Yes, <laughs> here you are. Okay. I'll give you that. Okay, this is an Atlas. Yeah, Atlas GP9, decorated in the Southern Pacific Black Widow scheme. The Southern Pacific Black Widow scheme. Yeah, that's what they call it. This is number 5623, which is actually a locomotive that still exists. The re real one runs on the Niles Canyon Railway these days. Oh, that's not too far from us. Yeah, I have an HO scale model of this as well um, that's by Ather. And, um, the only thing that about this one is that the um, it doesn't have the right light package on it, so that's something I'll have to fix someday. Okay. Uh, so that it looks right, because it's just got the regular simple headlight on it, which is, for most other railroads would have been, uh, you know, all it had, but, you know, SP used to put more lights on their engines. So. And they were really bright. Yeah. Oh, look at this. That is the cutest little caboose. <laughs> Another caboose. Oh, my gosh. That is so adorable. This is a Atlas N scale. It's a CNO cupola caboose, but it's decorated for Missouri Pacific. That's I do so not have cute. a lot of Missouri Pacific, hardly any actually. So it's kind of a neat little model. I don't think I've ever run it really because it's got plastic wheels on it, which I guess were. I think Atlas was doing plastic wheels for a while, which usually is the first thing I take off and replace. Yeah. Because I don't really care for plastic wheels. They tend to accumulate and spread uh, junk around on the track. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know that was why. Yeah. The metal wheels tend to do it less. Um, so, oh. and especially at end scale, uh, they're small to begin with, so. Um, Some of these I just cannot get open. I yeah, the, the microtrains ones usually lift from the end. Oh, from the end, okay. Yeah. You have to kind of push the box. Aha, there you go. I did it. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Um, at least a lot of them. This is another old microtrains car that I had from when I was a kid. It's a Southern Pacific flat car. That's yeah. cute. I have replaced the wheels on it, and it'll. No, it's not really weathered. I guess it looks like it might have sprayed it with some dull coat or something, but anyway, that's one of the, one of the oldies. All these but goodies. Yeah, and so is this. Yeah, they look like all these but goodies. This is a Southern Pacific. Uh, yeah, this is actually Katie. That's how old it is. Before Katie spun off Microtrains into its own company. Oh. Um, okay. In fact, is this one? Yeah, this one's also a Katie, actually. Okay. Um, this is a Southern Pacific uh, overnight boxcar. Which I always I thought these were so cool when I was a kid, and yeah, the doors open. 
It looks like they do, but it doesn't want to open for me. There it goes. Oh, it, they're taped. Oh, you taped them so they wouldn't open on the thing. I, yeah, I think on this car, um, some of these cars, um, the vibration of just running it around the track is enough for the doors to go back and right. forth, and it bothered me, so I just put some masking tape in there to hold them shut. Yeah, that would bother me too, though, um, honestly. Like, I want doors to open um, on my command, not on their own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's, it's kind of annoying when they sit there going like this as the car, you know, it's right. not something you typically see. So I thought this was kind of interesting. Um, let's see if I can get this to open. It was a one-time fluke. No, there we <laughs> okay. go. Um, it's, it's logs. Okay. It has its own little wheels on there, but there's no flat car, so explain that. <laughs> okay, this is a Microtrain's disconnect log car. Um, this was actually something that they used to do way back in the day on logging railroads, and it just looks like this one really? fell off. Really? So there's no actual train, it's just logs on some wheels. So yeah, so what it is is the logs themselves actually form the car body when it's loaded. Right. And when it's not loaded, these little things become their own little independent cars and they couple them together like this. Okay. So when it's not loaded, you'd see just a whole train of these things, and then they load them and it becomes like a freight car. Wow, so that, that's cool. Yeah, something you typically would see like a, not that's on really the cool. so much on a main line, but like on a little backwoods railroad w that's basically for loggers. Right, right. I don't think this would have passed muster on a main line railroad, you know, safety and all that. <laughs> don't think so. I yeah. also I don't think these had air brakes because there was no way to do that. Oh, okay, yeah. So, um, so yeah, so it's just logs on the roll, basically. Right? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was so. thinking. I'll oh, hand you that one. There was, you know, some things that used to be done that were, you know, kind of questionable as far as, you know, like yeah, that's, safety. Yeah, <laughs> that's why we have safety regulations nowadays. Yeah. That is exactly right. And this is another log car. This is a, a Walther's 45-foot logging Flat car. This would be more like mm. a more modern kind of log car. Uh, this one doesn't have a load, but it does have a neat see-through deck. Yeah, that is cool. And it's also made of um, metal mm. mostly, so it's got a reasonable weight hefty. to it. As I grab it, like, my baby fingers, yeah. geez. Yeah. Be careful with the trains. I feel like they're so tiny and cute, I could just be like... <laughs> <laughs> no eating the trains. <laughs> no eating the trains. So it's decorated for... Chehalis Western, that's how you say that. I think that's in Washington. Chehalis Western, that's interesting. Um, but what do we got here? Oh, another Wheels of Time. Okay. Wheels of Time, 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 Time. Not to be confused with the Wheel of Time fantasy uh, <laughs> book series. Um, anyway, uh, this is another flat car. I think it's just like the other one we saw, but this one is Southern Pacific, and this is another one, basically the same thing, but decorated from Milwaukee Road. So, so just decorated a little differently each yeah, one. Yeah, different paint jobs, but okay, but cool. the same basic idea. So we can probably move along with those. Yes, I like to try and group the trains, and that way you can find you know find ones that look the same, and we can just kind of go, oh yeah, yeah. Those all go together. <laughs> okay. Oh, another undecorated. What is this? GP38-2. This one's actually complete, though. Not in a baggie <laughs> with parts missing. Oh, I was going to say, it's undecorated, but it's complete? Wait. <laughs> I'm lost. Yeah. It's an Atlas GP38-2 that um, has no paint, but is otherwise looks like completely intact. Oh, that's cool. So I haven't um, done anything with this one yet. <laughs> so that one will be free to be doing anything with. Is yeah, what you're saying. yeah. So it can make. I'm saving that to the end. Something out of it eventually. Yeah, it's cute. Okay, I think we've already had one of these, or maybe it's just that. It's just painted really dark. Maybe it's longer than the last one we had. Yeah, that's a different car. This. This is a Microtrains. Uh, looks like a 50-foot box car, decorated for Santa Fe. And the gray. Oh, look at that. 
It's got open doors open. doors. This one actually nice. has a load in it too. Really? Of some. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah. It's cool. It doesn't slide, right? No, it's just in there. So you think that's supposed to be like wood? Yeah, it looks like it's supposed to be crates or something. The crates? Mm. Yeah, that's mm. cool. Yeah. I mean, what? I know trains sure. come back empty or whatever, but I like to see them full when they're running on the, you know, lines. To me, that's more realistic, like the trains are headed out to their yeah. destination. I like that. I'm just going to pass you some of these cute cabooses. So I got a bunch of microtrains cabooses. This is actually, this one's painted. One's for, this one's painted for Rio Grande, but this is actually an SP caboose design. And uh, I actually remember I'm, I think I painted the handrails white because that's what it was supposed to be. Um, hmm. This one does not have white handrails. Yeah, this is the only, I think that's the only Rio Grande one that I have. Here's a Southern Pacific. Yeah, so as, as a Southern seven, Pacific seven, car, seven. these are actually authentic. Um, and another Southern Pacific. Yeah, so some of these, this is another Katie. So this is one I painted myself. Um, these were cars that um, were SP cabooses when I bought them, and then I painted them into a, my North Coast Railroad, which was a freelance railroad I had when I was like in my 20s, and then I repainted it back into SP <laughs> later. Um, well, so. that's the good thing about being you. <laughs> <laughs> so um, these are actually uh, fairly authentic uh, SP cars. And these are more of them. This is another one. This is also a KD, so this is another one that I painted. A slightly different paint scheme. This one has the uh, more gothic style lettering. Um, I'm pretty sure I researched these too so that they're, uh, the numbers and lettering styles are, are consistent with what they should be. And this is, this is a, a microtrains car. Basically the same thing though that was factory painted for uh, Texas and New Orleans, uh, but with Southern Pacific lettering also. TNNO was a Southern Pacific subsidiary that ran in Texas because it, I think up until the early 60s, Texas required that railroads be headquartered in Texas. So SB oh. had to make a subsidiary. Okay. But it was basically just part of SP. Basically to get around the, the rule. Yeah. The, oh, there we go. This is an Intermountain Southern Pacific uh, sugar beet gondola. Oh, sugar beet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So this, this has a, it's, it's a gondola that they put these plywood extensions on, and they used to fill them up with sugar beets. In fact, not too far from where we live, they used to, there was a loader. I think you can still see the remnants of it yeah. down off the freeway, a little yeah. south of us. Yeah, you mean go down 101? Yeah. That one that's sitting up there? Yeah. It looks like people have tagged it, which is, you know, never cool. Yeah. But, um... Yeah, that's so. It's so cool to see that some of our history is still standing, so we can go and check it out. Yeah, but there, there used to be a lot of those things running around at one point. Yeah, well, where we live in Gilroy, there's a lot of farming too, so you would expect to see, you know, stuff like that because there's been farming in this area for so long. Right. So this is a. Southern Pacific, another microtrains car. Southern Pacific with the blue scheme for the Shasta Springs, Shasta Water. Oh, like um, Shasta, Shasta Lake and all yeah, California? there's a the Shasta Springs was a resort at oh. one time. Okay. I think it's like a religious retreat. Some religious community took it over at some point. Hmm. But um, anyway. Uh, it, I guess maybe they made a, I'm not sure what the story is behind the paint scheme, but maybe they were trying to promote it or something. Oh, okay. There's some more log cars. Oh, Can these? Oh, here's yes. another, this is another WP. This is exactly like the other WP car we saw, so we'll skip that one. That guy's lid is cracked. Okay. So that you can't have this one. All right, and this is a little microtrains skeleton log car. It's a little different style of log car that actually has a frame. 
Oh, it has something on the bottom. Yeah. Okay. Um, you That's know what's what looking for on the other one? <laughs> what's cool about these little microtrains log cars is that they actually have chains that are actually real chains holding the logs on. So, so it looks like miniature to scale chains? Yeah, I mean, it's actually, I you totally can move it around. It's, it's actually a metal chain. Wow. It's just super fine. That's so crazy. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of cool. That's really kudos because that's a tiny, tiny detail. Yeah. I remember it. I think I got these to go with the chaise, actually, because you usually often see chaise, you know, on logging lines. Okay. And this is a longer, uh, slightly more modern microtrains log car. This one has stakes instead of chains. Stakes? Yeah, these big stakes to hold the logs on. Oh, okay, I see. And the fake fake log loads that would look a little better if they were maybe painted a little more. But um, it's cool that they give you the load at least. Okay. And this is another little log car just like the one we just saw, so we'll move on with that one. And here's another oldie. It's another Katie. This is a Union Pacific flat car in the root of the streamliner scheme. Oh, it's got some stakes too. Yeah, they used to give you the stakes. I guess they still do. But you could um, detach them and use as many as you wanted. So there's oh. only like two left on this one. I don't think I ever put them all on it to begin with, but that's pretty old. That, that's from my childhood right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is this one. This is uh, another Katie. Um, in the Spokane, Portland, and Sk Seattle scheme, a 50-foot boxcar. That one looks like it's an older one for sure. Yeah, this one is slightly weathered, ever so slightly weathered. And it's still in a box because you take such great care of them. Yeah, well, these little microtrains boxes are actually pretty good. They keep the keep the models pretty well. Except for the crack lid thing. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. This is another BLMA car. This is... Uh, Another gondola, except this one's decorated for SP. So it's kind of like the Sacramento Northern car oh, that okay, yeah. we had earlier. But and so like the things that go in there, like what's on the back of trucks, right? Yeah, gondolas could be used to haul anything that needs to be um, kept from rolling off the <laughs> side of the train. <laughs> you know. So multi-use. Yeah, pipe. They, a lot of time they put pipe in them and stuff like that because oh, okay. the sides help keep it. Or, I don't know. They can. They're scrap metal. They, they haul all kinds of things in gondolas. The only uh, disadvantage to gondolas is that they have to be unloaded from the top. So, mm -hmm. as opposed to like a hopper, which could. Right. You know, although they do have drop bottom gondolas, which kind of are like a hopper car. So I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> this uh, another old one. This is an AHM mini trains. So that's going back. AHM. Yeah. Um, covered hopper that I think what one time was decorated for Burlington and I patched it for my north coast so the NC reporting marks on it are for. It looks like it's been tagged and someone kept patching it. <laughs> well I, I painted out the Burlington and the, the Burlington Route Herald right. although I left the way of the Zephyrs on it <laughs> and then uh, looks like I've replaced the trucks and wheels but that's an oldie. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. yeah. I got some stuff that goes back pretty far. This guy is pretty cool. <laughs> this is a Microtrains heavyweight passenger car decorated for Santa Fe. It's a diner. So that's. They're pretty nice. The Microtrains heavyweight cars are really nice. I like that darker paint scheme. Yeah. yeah. A lot of the railroads used to have that sort of uh, dark green paint scheme before the Streamliner era when they all started doing their own more colorful things. Right. And these guys look the same. Yeah, these are Prairie Shadows models, which is in association, yeah, in association with Rapido trains. Oh, Rapido. Yeah. And this is actually a freelanced railroad. They put this out as a memorial, uh, this Puddington Valley. Um, Puddington Valley. Yeah, this was somebody who had their, who made up their own railroad, and I think the guy died. Oh. But they so they they made these cars as a kind of a rem memorial, and they were uh, they they sold them in two different numbers. So um, 
anyway, I got both mm. of them. I think there mm. was some kind of charity thing. I don't know if they were donating to the family or something when that when I bought them, but. Um, Fairy shadow, Puddington Valley. Anyway, I thought they were neat looking cars, so I got them. Yeah, that is pretty nifty. Yeah. And you got these yellow ones over here. Yeah, and these are, well, they're sort of the same, but different. <laughs> um, these are Microtrain center beam flat cars. They're both yellow, but this one's decorated for Union Pacific. And, and the other one? The other one is decorated for Trailer Train. Trailer Train? What's that? It's a leasing company. There you go. TTX, basically, nowadays. Um, TTX? Yeah. But, um, same, I think it's the same model, just a different paint job. And there's still more. There's still more. Uh, I'm still pulling stuff out, folks. <laughs> We're getting close. Don't be trying right. to cheat and peek. I saw oh, that. Okay. <laughs> oh, another. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to make this a box a... just for these. Okay, so believe it or not, this is a, a, an F7A, which oh. seems to at least not have jettisonable trucks. Um, <laughs> this is a, a Kato. Uh, model the shells are elsewhere this is another oh and there's another one <laughs> yeah these are going to be the the excursion passenger oh. units for that unnamed uh oh no unnamed railroad <laughs> so uh, so you know more ghosts in a box that need to be revived yeah into as, a new uh, life into yeah something else yes and then this guy right here this is a union pacific uh passenger car from Kato. Uh, yeah. I think I might have got this with the intention of repainting it for the excursion train that I was thinking of putting together. But like your own excursion train? Yeah. Or? Okay. Yeah. For your own made up right. own railroad. Or I could throw it in with my other UP cars that I have. So. Okay, so as always, there's always some rattlesnakes in the box. Some things that don't look like they belong. And this would be one, this very, very old. <laughs> Atlas very old. N-Gage track assortment, but I doubt that's what's in here. Probably not. Oh, this is. <laughs> what is that? This. <laughs> you guys, this is, <laughs> no. This, what is what? This no. is something I made when I was little, a kid. What? It's a little, I don't know what it's I was trying to do. Boat. No, it's a, it's a depressed center uh, flat car with no wheels that I put like a fence around one end and a ladder and some barrels. <laughs> and I tried to make phone where calls. where you thought you were going to live when you grew up? <laughs> that you were just going to ride the rails and you were going to make your house on a flat car? Is that what's happening I don't know. right there's now? A little, there's a little outhouse on the front with wires you going into it. You see what I'm it. saying? This is like really crazy and silly. I don't know what the what I was thinking this, doing this. <laughs> this is this is what he dreamt of living. He, yeah. I'm serious. Anyway, this, that is that is so funny. So my modeling skills have definitely improved since then. <laughs> You're so funny. And then this other cardboard box, which you don't normally see cardboard boxes like this in here. So what um, is this? This is N scale kit number five five zero two. Santa Fe passenger car series baggage car. Oh, but it's okay. just extra pieces, though, really. Yeah, this was a, a laser kit, American Model Builders, um, which I don't know if they're still making these, but they had some pretty neat um, N scale passenger car kits that you could put together. That's cool. Um, it looks like it has the trucks in here. Uh, the actual car is somewhere. I, ha I do have the actual car. Um, Again, I was putting together an excursion train for, you know, something, but it didn't ever get uh, thankfully made. At least some of it didn't. Some of it did, which is regrettable, but um, I'll have to do some repainting. There's some um, hoses sets and some magnetic knuckle couplers. Oh, these are just Kato parts that yeah. are spare parts. Yeah. Spare parts, and then that's, no. Instruction All right, booklet. so last but not least. Pickup trucks. Two cars and 
two pickup trucks. I think those are cars. Are those cars? No, they're pickup, pickup trucks. trucks. They're all the same. These are Ford uh, Atlas and scale Ford F-150 pickup trucks. Look at that. Isn't that so cute? You got white and black. Yeah, these are just plain black ones. Oh, oh. And those, I think those are decorated think for those BNSF. Are kind of something, yeah. BNSF. So okay. those would be like That's cute, railroad huh? trucks. But yeah, they're pretty nice little models. I'm sure you're wondering, so I'm just going <laughs> to. Oh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Rum. Cool. That's cool. I like the little cars. We got to get lots of little cars and people and horses and cows and goats and all that stuff. Yeah. And put them everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. All right. Well, you know what that means. We're finally we at the end. We're finally at the end. If I can lift this, we're at yeah, the end. Yeah, that's a lot of stuff in there. <laughs> that is so much. So I really hope that you take a picture of this table. Okay. <laughs> of the stack that is on the table, because, wow, that's a lot. This one's going to be a long video, you guys. Yep. Um, but, yeah, um, thanks for watching. <laughs> yeah. And hanging out with us and seeing all of Daniel's amazing N-scaled trains. <laughs> this is a lot. Yeah, you know, I get confused sometimes because... Um, I have a lot of boxes of HO scale stuff and not as many boxes of N scale, but then you have to think about the boxes that have N scale have more stuff in them because much the trains more. are smaller. So, <laughs> right, much more stuff. Oh, that one's the one I, that I still think I probably have more HO, but um, I have a lot of N scale stuff. Time will <laughs> tell when we're able to put everything out. Yeah. Maybe if we're doing that thing by then, we can do a competition or I'm guessing. Um, which one you have more of or something. Oh, yeah. That would be cool. Okay. be a lot of fun stuff. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so I think uh, that's probably the end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> that is a lot. <laughs> so uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching, guys. <laughs> oh, and by the way, since this is our last episode of the year. Yeah. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> <laughs> Happy New Year, everybody. Let's hope 2021 is better. Oh, gosh. Let's hope. <laughs> Let's ring it in with some fun <laughs> and lots of positivity.